don't let anyone tell you that Python is slow. Sure, it may not be as fast as those fancy compiled languages, but with these six secrets, they won't be able to tell the difference, especially with the last one. The first secret, use the built-in functions. It may seem tempting to write your own code to solve problems. And let's be honest, it's kind of fun. However, if you really want to go fast, you're better off using the built-in functions of the standard library. Don't believe me? Here's a comparison of my own sorting algorithm against the built-in sorted function. And no, it's not slow because I'm bad at writing code. I think. These built-in functions are faster because they're written in C, which is one of those compiled languages I mentioned earlier. If you can't beat them, you may as well join them, just in secret. My second approach is to be lazy. Laziness is a virtue. Our jobs as developers is to enable that laziness. Who wants to manually do anything when you could just write some code to do it for you in perhaps the same amount of time, if you're lucky? You can bring this laziness to Python as well through the use of generators. By using the yield keyword, we can actually turn functions into iterative generator functions. Through the yield keyword, a generator function returns a generator type, which can then be called using either the next function or in a for loop. Each call of the generator returns the next instance of yield in the function. You can imagine this as pausing and resuming the function. Using a generator when working with a large data set prevents having to do expensive memory allocation, which can heavily impact performance, as you can see. Tip number three is to use concurrency. Have you ever thought about cloning yourself so you can get twice as much done? If so, I have some good news for you. In computer science, we refer to that as concurrency. Not all problems can be solved concurrently, but there are a good number that can. The ones that really can are known as embarrassingly parallel. I'll probably do a video on what problems are considered embarrassingly parallel, so now's a good time to consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Concurrency can be achieved in Python using the multiprocessing library. In this example, we're making use of multiprocessing to batch process a number of image by adding a Gaussian blur to them. We're timing this both running concurrently and in single processing mode. As you can see, running concurrently is a fraction of the time. Tip number four is to compile your code using Cython. Cython is actually another language that is a superset of Python. It basically allows you to compile Python-like code to C. What this means is you can fit in with your compiled friends from before, and this time, they have to respect you. Cython isn't a full-on replacement for Python, but instead a way to optimize certain parts of your code base to improve the overall performance. In this example, we're using it to compile a module that calculates a factorial for a given integer. First, we just need to run our compilation command to compile the code to C. Then we can run our test file to measure the performance. Yes, that timing is correct. We really do get that level of improvement. My fifth secret is to use libraries and frameworks that are compiled. You may not know this already, but I actually just heard that compiled languages tend to be more performant. Well, just like the standard library, there are a number of other frameworks we can use to improve this performance. Some of these frameworks include NumPy, Pandas, and Pillow which are all implemented using C under the hood. This allows you to harness the power of C whilst writing code in a language that is a bit more readable. And tip number six is to use PyPy. PyPy is an alternative Python interpreter that can be faster than the standard interpreter, CPython. What makes PyPy so fast is that it uses a compiler method known as just-in-time compilation. Just-in-time compilation is very similar to interpretation. However, the difference is that it looks forward in your code and compiles it before it's needed, which has a huge impact on performance. It's the same approach as what Java uses with the JVM. You can use PyPy as just a drop-in replacement for the Python interpreter, as you can see on the screen. Again, this gives a huge performance increase. Knowing when to use PyPy is a little more arcane, however, so it's probably a good idea to benchmark your code with both PyPy and the standard Python interpreter before coming to a decision. Armed with these six secrets, you can now make Python as fast as those compiled languages. If you know of any secrets to make Python go faster that I didn't cover in this video, let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you on the next one.